Welcome to the Live Healthy Now series. We are so happy that you have chosen to invest in your health. The presenters for this series are Beverly Edwards Haynes, Pastor Errol Lawrence, and Pastor Cameron Caronco. The Live Healthy Now series runs from November the 12th to the 27th. Tonight's topic is Nutrition 201. Please join me in prayer. Father, we thank you for the knowledge and we thank you for the technology that allows us to share this knowledge with others. We ask that you continue to be with this series and help it to be a blessing to someone. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now on to you, Sister Beverly. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to night three of Live Healthy Now. If you love oatmeal, you're going to enjoy this recipe, Oatmeal Bake. Have a look. Didn't that look delicious? We love oatmeal at my home and that crushed pineapple and this, the mixed berries, lots of good things happening there. We want to thank Life and Health Network for permitting us to use their videos on a nightly basis. And I encourage you to go to their website because they've got a lot more recipes for you. They've got articles you can read. They've got courses you can take. So go and have a look there. Well, last evening we started talking about the N in the New START acronym, which of course stands for nutrition. And especially in this day and age that we're living in, when we're trying to combat things like COVID-19, it is imperative that we learn how to live healthy now. We learn how to eat, to reclaim our heritage of good health. And so tonight, we're gonna to continue this, the discussion with respect to nutrition. You see, it's not the food in your life, it's the life in your food. What are you feeding yourself? Are you feeding yourself good, wholesome plants that are alive, that are gonna benefit your body, or are you feeding yourself dead food? We talked last night about some famous quotes, the, the really famous one being, let food be your medicine and medicine be your food by Hippocrates. And I try to steer us into thinking that, not to thinking, but believing that plant-based, plant-based eating is the way to go. And we have the research that tells us that. Dietitians of Canada, for example, is telling us that appropriately planned vegetarian diets are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and they provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. And then Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, they had a whole bunch of things as well. And the one that really caught our eye was that plant-based diets are linked to less severe illness from COVID-19. If you want to boost your immune system, if you want to make yourself less susceptible to contracting COVID-19, and even if you do get it, if you want less severe symptoms, you want to start eating more plants, definitely. You remember, I introduced you to this Christian author, Ellen White, and she 
had the same thing to say with respect to eating plant-based. She said, grains, fruits, nuts, and vegetables, they impart a vigor of intellect that is not afforded by a more complex and stimulating diet. So over a hundred years ago, she was saying the same thing. Well, we started out talking about what does a plant-based way of eating do for us? Um, are the health benefits associated with plant-based eating scientifically true? You've seen that already now. Can we really get all the nutrition we need eating only plants? And isn't plant protein inferior to animal protein? That's what we're going to be tackling tonight. Can we really get all the nutrition we need eating only plants? What do you think I would say? You're going to find out. Well, as a dietitian, as a nutritionist, one of the questions I get the most is, where will I get my protein if I'm not eating meat? Well, let's look at some of our largest land animals, the elephants, giraffes. What do they eat that makes them so big and strong? As you see in the pictures there, they eat plants. Think about Bessie the cow. When you're eating beef, where does that cow get all that protein to grow so big and strong? What do they eat? They eat plants. They eat grass and weeds and things like that. So I want you to think about it. If these animals can get all the nutrition they need simply from eating greens, simply from eating plants. Don't you think that you and I could probably do the same? After all, why get your protein secondhand from the cow when you can do what the cow does and get it firsthand from the plants? Now, here are some protein facts I want you to consider. Human breast milk has the lowest grams per liter of protein than the other mammals that we, you know, like cows and goats and all of those. Human breast milk has the lowest. So if you're feeding your child cow's milk, they're getting a milk that has too much protein for them. All that protein that is in the cow's milk is to help a baby calf grow up to be big and huge. Too much for our children. And we see in some children that they just can't even handle it. They get things like, are you familiar with this one? Bedwetting. Do you know that that is associated with cow's milk? When you're giving your children these things, diabetes, type one diabetes, do you know that is associated with giving your children cow's milk? So we need to start moving away from that and providing the plant foods, providing mother's human breast milk for your children. Now, how much protein do we need on a daily basis anyway? You'll see that there's a, a little calculation there. And if it's in kilograms, if you're doing it in kilograms, all you've got to do is to take your weight and times it by 0.8 or 0.9 to get, the kilo, to get the grams of protein you need in a day. If you're doing it by pounds, all you've got to do is uh, times your pounds by four, divide by 10, and that will give you the grams of protein that you need in a day. So we've got the example there of 140 pounds. And so you times that by 10, divide it no, times it by four, divided by 10, and you get 56 grams. Now, the World Health Organization, they're saying, you know what, the median is 0 0.66. So 0 0.8, 0 0.9 is even high compared to the median of 0 0.66. Now, one thing I need you to understand, if you are eating enough calories, you do not have to worry about the amount of protein that you, that you think you need. You're going to get all the protein you need if you're eating enough calories. And something else to consider. Uh, people will say, you know, as a vegetarian or as a vegan, you're probably not getting all the protein you need. Uh-uh. 
On average, vegetarians and vegans consume 70% more protein than they need every day. So there really isn't any cause for alarm with respect to protein. Forget about doing the calculations. If you're getting enough calories, you're getting enough protein. And I just love it that Health Canada is encouraging us to have meat alternatives such as beans, lentils, and tofu often. These are packed with protein, as we can see in this little chart here. Are you familiar with edamame? That's the young soybean, the green, the green ones that you'll buy in the grocery store. You'll get them in your frozen food section. They're so delicious. And they've got 10 grams of protein in only half a cup of the edamame. If you go down to this, the tofu, half a cup, 20 grams of protein. Do you see why I'm saying you don't need to worry about getting enough protein if you're vegetarian or vegan? You will get plenty. If you go down to even a potato, you're gonna get four grams of, of protein in a potato. Most foods have some amount of protein in them. And so if you're eating a wide variety of foods on a daily basis, you are going to get enough. Guaranteed, no problems there. Now I talked a little bit about this before, the plant-based diets linked to less severe illness from COVID-19. They did a study of healthcare workers just to see um, how susceptible they would be with respect to um, getting COVID-19 if they were exposed to it. They're exposed to it in the hospitals and such. And they found that people who eat a plant-based diet were less um, they would get it less than other people who ate more um, protein foods like meats and such. So again, it's just showing us that if you're eating plant-based, you're doing your body a favor on so many counts, and especially when it comes to COVID-19. This seems to be, the research is telling us, the way to go. Could changing our diets defeat COVID-19? You know what? I'm pretty certain that it could. Listen to what Colin Campbell has to say here. Switching to a whole food, plant-based diet should lessen the severity of disease symptoms while simultaneously increasing COVID-19 antibodies. So it's a win-win situation. He says, based on other studies, this effect may begin within days possibly providing enough time for people not yet infected by COVID-19 to strengthen their immunity. And that's what I'm trying to encourage here. Throughout this series, the New START principles are going to help us to build up our immune systems so that we don't have to be afraid, even if we get something like COVID-19, your system will be able to manage it. PCRM. Org, that's Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. Will a plant-based diet impact your gut bacteria? And we know that we want to have a healthy gut bacteria ratio there. We've got a ton of bacteria in our gut. You want the good guys. And so we find that a plant-based diet really impacts our gut bacteria and it helps to boost the good bacteria in our systems. Let's talk about greens. There's a beautiful picture of spinach, but in particular, I wanna talk about beets today. Not the beets themselves, but the beet greens. I want to show you how eating more greens is going to just be so exponentially beneficial to your system. We've got a chart here. We're going to compare 100 grams of beets and 100 grams of beet greens. We're gonna talk about the calories, the protein, etc. So let's go. In 100 grams of beets, you're gonna get 43 um, calories. You're gonna get 22 calories in 100 grams of beet greens. Let's look at the protein. In the beets, you're going to get 1.61 grams of protein in 100 grams of the beets. But look at the beet greens. 
you're going to get 2.2 grams of protein. The carbs, we don't have to look at the carbs too much. You're going to get more carbs than the beets because of the sugar content. Look at the fiber. 2.8 grams of fiber in the beets, 3.7 in the beet greens. Now, a lot of people throw away their beet greens. So let's look at the calcium. 16 milligrams of calcium in the beets compared to 117 in the beet greens. Iron, 0 0.8 in the beets compared to 2.57 in the beet greens. Do you see how the beet greens are so fantastic for your good health? Vitamin C, about five milligrams compared to 30 in the beet greens. So many people throw away the beet greens. Vitamin A, now this is going to knock you out of the ballpark here. 33 milligrams of vitamin A in 100 grams of beets. Did you see the number for the beet greens? 6,326 milligrams of vitamin A in 100 grams of beet greens. Are you ever going to throw away your beet greens again? I hope not, because they are much more nutritious than the beets themselves. So make sure you're doing stuff with them. Put them in your stir fries, in your salads, in your soups. Do not ever throw away your beet greens. Here's what you need to know about green protein. From the book Greens for Life by Victoria Butenko, she has this to say, greens are the primary food group that match human nutritional needs most completely. Do you know what the magic is in greens? It's the green, the color, the chlorophyll. And do you know that chlorophyll is almost identical, the structure of chlorophyll is almost identical to the structure of your blood. And so greens are the primary food source group that match human nutritional needs most completely. We can see why, because the structure is so close to our blood. Greens can be combined with any other foods. They're an excellent source of protein, as we've been talking about. Um, and she says, greens have sufficient protein to build muscle in grazing animals. This is what we need to remember. If they can get all the protein they need from the greens, surely you and I can get all the protein we need from animal sources. Well, we've got here Eat to Live Joel Furman, a doctor down in the U.S., excellent doctor. He says this, even physicians and dietitians are surprised to learn that when you eat large quantities of green vegetables, you receive a considerable amount of protein. Isn't that unbelievable? But it shouldn't be because that's what we've been talking about here. Greens are the way to go. And then in the China study by Colin Campbell, he says, there is a mountain of compelling evidence showing that so-called low quality plant protein, which allows for slow but steady synthesis of new proteins is the healthiest type of protein. Need I say more? So what kind of greens are you eating? Are you eating any arugula? Arugula's got that nice spicy peppery flavor to it. Are you eating your beet greens? We just talked about those. Bok choy. Do you know you can eat carrot tops? My husband and I are farmers and when we sell our produce, we always sell our carrots with the tops. We sell our beets with the tops. We sell our radishes, our turnips with the tops because there is excellent nutrition in those greens. Uh, when we look on the other side of the chart there, are you familiar with chickweed, clover, dandelion? These are things that are likely growing in your backyard. And these are the things that we put pesticides on to try and get them out of our backyards. 
we should be nurturing our dandelions, not trying to kill them because their nutritional um, content is off the charts. Eat your dandelions. If you've been putting pesticides on them all along, don't eat those. But purchase some dandelion seed and have your nice little dandelion patch in your garden. Fantastic for you. Lamb's quarters, stinging nettles, have you heard of those? You probably have them in your backyard. And then of course, basil, cilantro, those types of things. So eat your greens. In fact, have you tried drinking your greens? I've got a green smoothie challenge for you. When you eat your greens in a green smoothie, when you drink it, you are gonna be doing such amazing things for your body. Because for example, most of us probably wouldn't eat two, three or four cups of greens at a time. But when you put them in a smoothie, it just gets it all down, 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 down. And you can drink a whole slew of it at one time. So here's a little recipe for you. This is just a, you know, a basic kind of recipe. You can embellish it, put whatever you want in there. But two cups of raw leafy greens. And in fact, I'm gonna say, you know what? I want you putting more than two cups, three cups, four cups, cram as much in as you can. Put a banana in there a pear, a handful of red grapes, or any fruit you like. But I've got these particular ones because they're gonna make it a nice, sweet green smoothie. And I like sweet things, so. And then put some water in there, or some fresh orange juice, or some pineapple juice. Um, blend it all together in your high-speed blender. And this is where I love using my Vitamix because it's gonna get it so nice and smooth. Blend that all up and drink it. I tell you, if you will have a green smoothie every day, this is actually gonna make your whole blender full. Drink all of it within that day. And I guarantee you, if you do that every day, even for a week, you are going to start to see changes in your health, guaranteed. Here are the benefits of green smoothies. For one thing, they're gonna make your blood more alkaline. You want your blood to be more alkaline than acid because when it's acidic, that's when diseases can start to take hold. It's going to balance your body's homeostasis, help your body do all the things it needs to get done. It's gonna help you absorb other nutrients even better. Allergies, drink some green smoothie and see what happens to your allergies. If you've got problem skin, problems with your fingernails breaking, you've got dandruff, try the green smoothies and see what happens. If you're diabetic, green smoothies are a good way to go rather than the juicing. I definitely encourage people to do juicing, carrot juicing, beet juicing, other vegetable juices. But if you're diabetic, you wanna kind of stay away from those because it could shoot your blood sugars up. However, because the green smoothie has all the fiber in it, those are the things that you want if you're diabetic. It's gonna improve your health overall, guaranteed. And if you've got parasites in your system, infection in your system, try the green smoothies and see what happens. Here's a case study in the book, uh, Green for Life by Victoria Butenko. She talks about a 57-year-old female with eczema. And her eczema had been so bad all her life. She was a, allergic to stuff, and she'd been put on steroids because of the severity of the eczema, always itching, always scratching. She had been hospitalized five times throughout her life because of the severity of her eczema. After two weeks of green smoothies, this dear woman, her skin was clearing up and she was able to sleep through the night for the first time in years. What might a green smoothie do for your health? I put you to the challenge. Take that recipe that I just gave you or find some others. There are tons of them online and see what green smoothies can do for you. So my challenge, enjoy a green smoothie every day for a week and see what happens. And not just for a week, keep it going 
all those greens are going to be so cleansing, so healing to your body as well. Enjoy beans, legumes, and tofu at least four days of the coming week. All right, we're going to try and move away from the animal-based foods that are causing our bodies so much harm. We're going to try the beans, legumes, the tofu, the greens. So that concludes our discussion today with respect to the greens and the proteins. And I hope that your answers, your questions on whether you can get enough nutrition have been answered. In our next session, we're going to be talking about exercise and sunlight. So be sure to come on back. But we also have a freebie for you this evening. And I'll see if I can get that slide up. Uh, let's see here. We are supposed to be having a freebie for you. There it is. Why be a vegetarian? If you want that to be sent out to you, that's our free gift for you this evening. Send an email to bevhealth at gmail.com and we will get that out to you. No problem, no problem at all. So sit tight though, because we still have some gorgeous music for you by Preetha uh, Radlin, and then some words of inspiration by Cam Caronco or Errol Lawrence, depending on which YouTube channel you're watching. Thanks everyone.
Good evening, everyone. Good to be with you again. Thank you for tuning in to Live Healthy Now. You know, last night we explored together the creation account found in Genesis. We specifically looked at the intimate connection that God had in the creation of Adam and Eve. We also discovered that God's original diet was a perfect diet. They, the, Adam and Eve lived in a perfect garden. The diet consisted of fruits, grains, and nuts. Everything was perfect. You might ask in your mind then, what happened in that perfect garden that resulted in what we are experiencing on earth today? We're going to explore that this evening. As Bev has so aptly pointed out night by night, that the choices we make surely has a profound effect on our physical health. We have the power to choose to eat nutritionally healthy food and take proper care of our bodies, or to eat nutritionally unhealthy foods and not take proper care of our bodies and suffer the consequences as a result. You know, in the book of Genesis, we see that Adam and Eve had the freedom to choose to eat of every tree planted in the garden. The only tree that God told them not to eat of was a tree by the name of the knowledge of good and evil. If they ate of that tree they would willingly be choosing to disobey God and, uh, and as a result would have to suffer the ultimate consequence, which would be death. You know, the choices that we make every day can have a profound effect not only on our physical health, but certainly on our spiritual health as well. In the next few minutes together, I want to direct your attention to how Adam and Eve exercised their God-given free will and how their choice has affected you and me and all the generations that have come after them on this earth. We're going to go back to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, we were in that chapter last evening. Um, Genesis chapter 2, and we're going to read uh, verse 9. And out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then we're going to slip down to verses 15 and read verses 15 to 17. Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And then I want to draw your attention to uh, chapter 3, and we'll read the first six verses in chapter 3. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree, the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you'll be like God, knowing good from evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. It's amazing. This serpent, the devil used the serpent as a medium. It was one of the most beautiful creatures in the uh, garden and maybe it even had the ability to fly because it was found in the tree. Um, and it took Eve by surprise when the serpent started speaking to her. But uh, the serpent told the first lie to Eve, which directly contradicted God's command, that if you eat this fruit, you shall die. And what was the serpent? Uh, he said in verse 4, you will not surely die. So at this point, Eve had to make a decision. And in order to test Adam and Eve's love and trust of God, God had placed that tree, the knowledge of good and evil, in the midst of the garden and told them that if they did, they were not to eat of the tree or they would die. The devil, who used the serpent as a medium to communicate with Eve, contradicted God and told Eve that she wouldn't surely die. This is the first recorded lie in the Bible. And unfortunately, Eve chose to trust the serpent instead of God. She wanted her eyes to be opened, 
and to be like God, knowing good and evil. This enticed her. Satan got her to fall for the same problem that he had experienced in heaven. I want to take you to the book of Isaiah that describes uh, Lucifer. Um, Isaiah chapter 14. And we're going to read uh, just a couple of verses there. Isaiah chapter 14, and we'll read verses 12 to 14. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer. That was the devil's name in heaven before he became the devil. Lucifer. O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. If you notice, uh, Lucifer there has an eye problem. Not the kind that you go see an optometrist or ophthalmologist for, but a prideful. that He wanted to be like God. And that's what he enticed Eve with. He, he enticed her with, if you eat this fruit, you'll be like God and your eyes will be opened. So she unfortunately... The Bible record says she ate the fruit and gave it to her husband Adam and he ate. And as a result, that's why we don't have a perfect world anymore. Sin entered at that point. Tonight I want to appeal to you as we close with the thought that uh, I want to trust God and his word and not fall to Satan's temptations. Don't you? Let's bow our heads and pray and ask God's, for God's strength to be able to be true to him. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the clear description of how sin entered. But uh, over the nights uh, coming, we're going to explore how you've overcome the sin problem and provided a way for us to be uh, returned in relationship to you. May we uh, not fall to Satan's distractions and temptations. May we learn what the Bible says about your will and follow that will for our lives. That's my prayer for myself and for our viewers here this evening. Thank you again for your love and for your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us and investing in your health. If you have any questions or would like to speak to someone, please fill out the contact card that appears on the screen. Please join us on Wednesday evening when the topic will be walking on sunshine. Have a great evening. See you on Wednesday. Mm -hmm.